Okay, guys. We got Case Hatter with you. Thought I'd show you a little something. If you're going to do foam board flying, you're going to need some tools. Uh, a good metal yardstick is very helpful. This one's laid out in eighths and uh, millimeters. Very helpful. I was a carpenter's son. I've had a business uh, building houses. I've made cabinets, so I know about measuring. Uh, you'll also need some type of compass, protractor, uh, degree angle, whatever. Uh, many shapes and forms. This one here will do circles and give you degrees in all types of situations. This is the same way. Whoops. And actually you can pick these up at the dollar store. A uh, good drug store will have them. What you want is something where you can measure degrees on an accurate scale. For instance, this degree here that we're going to be working with is 62 degrees. Coming directly off the corner of the foam board, you want to come 62 degrees, as such, you see 62 degrees, if I'm set, I'm not set this exactly right, but 62 degrees coming straight off the corner and come exactly 26 and one half inches. 26 and a half inches. And stop. That's 670 millimeters. And if you do that, and then if you come off the bottom at a 90 degree angle, just like that, 90 degrees up, you should have approximately seven and a half inches. Actually, it works out seven five eighths because I left myself a little room to play. But seven and a half inches down puts you almost at the very bottom of the foam board. That's giving us our wing size. Okay, so we're doing seven and a half inches here and. The full width up here, uh, well, I thought I had it wrote down. You can tell I'm not a filmmaker. The full width up here is uh, 11 and 3 quarter inches. Now, when you're doing laying out any kind of airplane wing or anything else, if you don't have a pattern to copy, or even if you do have a pattern and you want to save that pattern for later or use again, when you mark, you need to pay attention to the way you're marking. If you're marking this way, you'll want to cut on the inside of your mark, leaving the mark on the outside. If you're marking on this, on the other side, you want to leave the mark on this side because you mark, in this case, this, this black marker that I've used so you could see better. I usually use a fine point pencil myself, but the Sharpie, the black Sharpie, comes out to about three millimeters wide. So you add three millimeters twice, three times, you've got, you know, three, six, nine millimeters that you've added to the size of your dimensions which can throw you off considerably, especially when you get into a longer distance. Okay, we've got 26 and a half inches from the top corner down at a 62 degree angle. And 90, uh, 90 degree angle up, seven and a half inches. Now, when you come up from the corner, to your 11 and a half inch mark.
You're going to have a total of 24 and uh, 3 quarters. With, a, uh, with that being 634, no, 632 millimeters. Now, your degree on your line going up, pre aileron if you lay this on your, lay your compass, your protractor, whatever you're using, you lay that right there on your 90, and you line up this right here, and you make sure it's perfect. You're going to be lining that up, and it's going to come out at 74 degrees. That's a good, comfortable temperature, wouldn't you say? All right, you've got 94, I mean, 90 degrees here on your 7.5. Ninety degrees on your seven and a half, sixty-two degrees on this one, seventy-four degrees here. Now I'm gonna come up when you get your seventy-four degrees started, you wanna come all the way up to nineteen and a quarter inches. And to just double check yourself, this corner to the end of your board, considering that they're all the same size, which you're probably not, they're off a little to be six and three quarter inches. Now, if you're young and you don't know rulers, think of a piece of pie. You've got one inch, and this one's cut up in eighths, and we're not gonna worry about the eighths, we're gonna worry about the quarters. You got a pie cut four ways. Well, that's a quarter of the pie, and that's half the pie, and that's three quarters of the pie, and that's full pie, okay? That's to give you the, the, the how to measure. All right, now we've come up our 74 comfortable degrees on our bottom. 74 degrees up. Then you want to go uh, up inch and three quarters. Now, if we was to put a protractor or a compass on here to get our degrees, we're right at right at. 97 degrees. That's a little warm, ain't it? 97 degree angle up will give you this. 97 degree angle up, inch and a quarter or 34 millimeters. And we came up 19 and a quarter inches from here at a 74 degree angle or 490 millimeters. Now, guys, my, my stick may be off on the millimeters, but that's, that's close. If you want to convert it, I would advise it. Okay, now we, we've come up our inch and a quarter at our 97 warm degrees. Now, all you got to do is connect this line to your 11 and a half inch. Okay? Once you connect that line, your 11 and a half inches, you're done on your outer dimensions. Yeah. That's half of the wing. We're going to name this from the bottom right. See, it's on our right side. We're going to need one over there. So don't cut the wrong way. You've got to have two this way because we're going to sandwich to make an airfoil. And then you'll need two flipped over. Now, what you can do, which would be a whole lot easier, is to just cut this out like it lays, cut out four of them, and just flip one over, because the top one will not have these cutouts. But you're going to have to take one you flipped over and use it for the bottom. Okay, now, on the bottoms of our wing, we've got some cutouts. We have... Uh, I cut out here for our battery. We're going to use a 2200 milliamp three cell battery. So we need uh, an inch and a half 
by 39 millimeters. Oh, well, inch and a half equals 39 millimeters, excuse me. And uh, I'd never make a good actor. That's why I don't do films like this much. But uh, that's an inch and a half, and it's a two and a quarter inches deep. No, wide. No, deep. Excuse me. Two and a quarter inches deep, 58 millimeters on the two and a quarter. Now, you want to come off the top to start it at three inches. Come down three inches to get your battery box. And then you're going to come down one and five eighths or one and a half inches either one. We're not working an eight, so we're going to have to come down one and look at that. Stick right to me. It's supposed to clean this table, huh? Okay, so we've come down our inch and three quarters. That's what it works out to. Inside line to inside line. And then we're going to... This box cut out here is for your speed control and your receiver. We're going to tuck them away so they don't get hurt. Okay, so on this one we've got 24 and a quarter inches. Ah, 24. Listen to me. Two and a quarter inches. That's 58 millimeters if my yardstick is right. And one and a quarter inches deep. This way. One and a quarter inches this way. Two and a quarter inches this way. One and a quarter inches or, or 34 millimeters. Two and a quarter inches, 58 millimeters. Now, those will get cut out completely. Now, we'll have to tie these wings together, these parts together. So, whatever you're using, I'm going to use the carbon arrow shaft. They're real small. Uh, if you didn't see my previous videos, I think it's called the Carbon Flash, and it's sold by to a... Uh, mm, I'll have to get one and read it, but... My previous video tells you about the shafts I use. They're very small, very strong. The reason they're, they're so strong, they, they're developed for uh, high poundage compound archery. So when that arrow shaft is shot, it don't do that in the air. It don't weevil. It stays firm and straight. So that makes a good stiffener for me. So what we want to do is whatever you're using, be it a round, square, whatever you got available. Uh, even you can even use wood dowels from the you know the hardware store. Uh, you want to lay it right in between these and mark around it so you don't forget to put it on there. Now on your aileron, this is going to be your aileron. There's a little catch to that. Alright, now just to highlight right quickly, 27 and a half at 62 degrees. You should come up 90 degrees at 7 and a half degrees. A warm 74, comfortable 74 degrees from this corner, up 19 and a quarter inches, or 490 millimeters. And, uh, I done forgot the millimeters, uh, the Degrees on that one. No, I just had that. Look, there it is. 97 degrees. It's that warm temperature. 97 degrees up. And then when you uh, get your 11 and a half degree uh, measurement down to here and, and tie it into this, you'll be right. Now, what that does, that, that's a cutout for your, for your prop right here, okay? All right, now we've got that. I'm going to put this over here. Now, this one I've got cut out already. Okay, so that's what it looks like cut out. 
Now, see, I've not, you noticed I've marked the nailer on here. I've also marked it on the back with a dotted line because this is the bottom. You want to cut this after you've got it all glued, so you need a reference line to go by. But you also need a reference line on this side because what we're going to do is we're going to take this right here and glue it. Whatever you're using for your stiffener to tie your two wings together, you're going to glue that right there. Okay? But, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here. Take and lightly cut your paper. Peel it off. You just want bare foam. Except for this. Well, yeah, you go ahead and cut that, uh, take that too. And, and glue your rod on there. And then all you got to do, you see this line here, that's two inches down from the edge. Two inches down from the edge, or 51 millimeters. Two inches down from the end. Or 51 millimeters. Now, on your aileron, you want to grow it from this, from your prop to your end, the way the airflow is. So you got two and a quarters down here at your aileron point. Up here, you got an inch and a quarter. Okay, inch and a quarter up here, 34 millimeters. Two and a quarter down here, 58 millimeters. Gives you a wider aileron. Okay? You follow? Alright, now once I got those lines cut and that paper peeled off, I'm going to pull the paper off of the scrap that I used that I got left. The scrap from cutting this out. I'm going to peel the paper off of it. And I'm going to fill in here, but I'm going to take a longer piece of this and tie it in with this one. Which I just happen to have one. And by the way, that's a uh, Carbon flash. It's a Beeman 14-12. It's made in the USA. What do you think about all that now? All right. Now, you want to take your strengthening shaft and lay it right up to your your line. Not past it. Not touching it. Just up to it. And then you want to cut it here. Now a little tip about cutting graphite. You can't take a pair of pliers and cut graphite. I've got a scroll saw, I've got a jigsaw, I've got a skill saw. Any of those will cut it if you're very slow and take your time. Another tip about cutting round stock graphite or even square stock graphite. Take you a piece of tape and wherever you're going to cut it, wrap that tape over the center and cut the tape as well as the carbon fiber. If you don't, the end, let's see, I think this one splintered a little bit. Yep. You see the little splinters coming off? It will splinter. And you can literally take a pair of pliers and just crush that. See how easily that crushed? It's not the crushing strength that we're worried about. It's the flex. This is very strong. So, now, we've got to this point. We got our carbon shaft cut. We got all that glued down. And we're going to take our scrap, pull both sides of the paper off, and we're going to fill in from the arrow carbon shaft to, the, to our lines that we've made. It's two inches from the edge there. Two inches on the end, two and a quarter from here, an inch and a half, uh, inch and a quarter here. So okay, we got our strength in our wing. So you pull both sides of the foam off your scrap, use your hot glue, and fill in between the line. 